So boundaries is one of the most talked about conversation in the relationship realm because it's a popular buzzword for the last few years. And I want to express something about boundaries to men. When a man receives a boundary from a woman, it can actually remind him of his mother. There I said it can remind him of mother energy as if it's telling him what to do. And whether you're a man or woman, nobody really likes to be told what to do. So today we're gonna lean into boundaries today and I'm gonna offer just a slightly different perspective on boundaries. Now, I like what Brene Brown talks about when it comes to boundaries and, and she uses um, the following. She says, a boundary is what's okay and what's not okay for me. Let me repeat that. Repeat that. It's what's okay and what's not okay for me. And I think that's a very healthy thing to experience in a relationship is the ability to express what feels good for you in a relationship and what doesn't feel good. Now, typically we talk about this in the area of communication because that's where most relationship mishaps happen in the form of communication. In fact, it's funny how people talk about the importance of communication, communication, and communication. And yet, do you realize most people are bad at communicating, at least in relationship? It's, it's not that they're bad at communicating. Let me reframe that. For men, men tend to communicate from more of their rational, logical side of their brain. And women tend to communicate more from the emotional side of their brain. Now, this is a pure generalization. It doesn't uh, follow you know, exact suit, but women tend to operate from that perspective. So do you see how if men talk from their, what they believe their logical, rational side, and women are speaking from their emotional side, it's more like this. Women are speaking the emotional side. Men are speaking, well, maybe let's do it this way. Men are speaking at the rational, logical side. Women are speaking at the emotional side. And you know that space in between, what that's called? That's called drama. <laughs> and why it's called drama is because there's, uh, let's use this analogy again. Women are here and men are here. You're trying to raise the guy up in the area of communication. And then many times you're using what boundaries in a way that isn't effective. Now, let me just be candid with you. I'm not a big fan of the word boundary. And yes, I talk about it frequently in uh, my videos. I'm not a fan of the word because a boundary feels like a barrier. It feels like an ending, you know, like a cliff is a boundary, a fence is a boundary, a wall is a boundary. And none of that feels really authentic to me from a, a, now, while we can use these terms, I'm going to offer something a little bit different today than a boundary. Now, I want to share with you, I took a list of um, some things, uh, examples of boundaries in relationship. I just Googled this. If you want, type in what are examples of boundaries in relationship, and here's what came up. Expecting others to communicate during disagreements with a maturity <laughs> and I thought that's kind of an interesting boundary. Let's lean into that in a moment. Letting go of codependency and having your own identity. I love that because that leans into my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. That I love that phraseology because it's all about being not being dependent on another. Oh, by the way, there's a link below to get a copy of all the books I recommend but it's about not being dependent on another human being for your necess your needs per se. There's a difference between a need and a want, okay? Needing something, like we need water, we need air, we need shelter. Those are needs or we would die, right? But in relationship, you know, sex, well, sex could be a need <laughs> for us men, but I was gonna say it's more of a desire and want. It's not needed to sustain life. It certainly is, uh, certainly benefits you when you have a relationship. And I went off on a, a poor tangent there, but going back to self-love, when we don't need someone to love us to feel good about ourselves, we're in a good place, okay? Number four, asking for personal space and quiet when needed, okay? That's probably makes sense as a boundary because we all need some space to ourselves. I think two people that are fully enmeshed 24 seven can probably have, can have some problematic aspects to their relationship. Even though my beloved and I, there's Marie right there, uh, we live together. She's been visiting her grandchildren for the last week. We've had space. And when we need space, we take space from each other, even though we live in a relatively small home. Okay. And number four, four voicing your concerns rather than holding on to resentments. 
So I thought about these are boundaries, but these don't feel like the boundaries I hear about in the dating, mating, and relating realm. And so I want to talk about those boundaries because those seem like the ones that are most talked about. And the most frequent one, coming back to communication, it's interesting. It said expecting, it said expecting others to communicate during disagreements with maturity. You know, uh, you know it's, it fascinates me because how many people disagree with each other and they're not coming from a mature place, not coming from a grown up place. Because when you have a disagreement with someone, and let me just say this, for a relationship to be successful, you need to establish good conflict resolution skills. If you don't have good conflict communication skills to resolve conflict, it's going to be problematic. One of the skills needed is to be a good listener. When your partner it disagrees with you, it's not about you being right. In a healthy relationship is finding a way to be happy with one another. How can we find that place of happiness? More importantly, it's listening to your partner's point of view, acknowledging their point of view. In other words, just simply acknowledge what they said to you. You can literally repeat back what they said. Uh, validate that their feelings are valid for them. Don't ever diminish someone's feelings. Don't ever discount someone's feelings. Don't ever come from a place of contempt. And I'm speaking to the men here as well. Okay. But when it comes to boundaries in relationship, we, we talk about communication, but one of the things that I think women particularly would like more of in their relationship, because remember we said what we, uh, what, um, wait, what was it again? Um, what's okay. And what's not okay for me communication, for example, frequency of communication and frequency of the actual face to face time together. I think that's one of the most important things that women desire in relationship and they want some clarity around that. And we're going to talk about that literally in a minute. The second thing I think is de most desired is the boundary of trust. And I call it the boundary of trust, but I'm really talking about the container of trust. And trust isn't just merely about fidelity. Trust is, does this person have my best interest at heart? You know, in the book uh, by John and Julie Gottman, Eight Dates, and this is a great book. By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of all the books I recommend. This is a great book as a foundational piece to understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. And chapter one is about trust and commitment. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that I'm going to say this whenever I bring up this book. Ladies, before the penis gets to go inside the vagina, you should have read this book and you should be very familiar with chapter one, Trust and Commitment. Do you know, realize today people will have sex with little or no trust and barely any commitment to one another? And commitment isn't just monogamy and exclusivity. It's sure, those are important things to have. But real trust, real commitment is, does this person have my best interest at heart? Do their feel, do my feelings matter to them as much as their own feelings matter to them? And sadly today, given that most people are in situationships, they're in casual relationships, they're in what I call dating is a just strung out long version of friends with benefits. Trust is the weakest link in many people's relationships today because they're not establishing commitment early on. They're not establishing the rules of engagement. Let me say that again, the rules of engagement. Do you know, it used to be that in war times there was rules of engagement and this is what you could do and what you couldn't do? It's funny, this is what you could do and this is what you couldn't do. There were rules of engagement. But well, we should have those same rules of engagement. This is why, folks, I created my, um, my dating vows for you so you can establish these rules of engagement. If you're not familiar with it, here it is, a copy of it right here. These are the rules of engagement, the dating vows. I agree. You both say this to one another. I agree to explore the process of getting to know you with the intent to declare something serious within the next three to six months. I agree to be monogamous sexually while we're having regular sex together. I agree to not actively seek and meet and date others while we're in the dating process, including taking down our dating profiles. 
I agree to not actively seek to meet and date others while we're in the dating process, including taking down our profiles. I agree to speak up if it isn't working for me versus pulling back, ghosting, and disappearing. And I agree to invest regular time in the process of getting to know you, which looks like this which looks like three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal and our professional life. See folks, instead of boundaries, I invite you to set up agreements. That's right, agreements. The rules of engagement. What are, if we're going to explore, if you want sex from me, dude, then this are my standards okay, of what I seek in relationships. So first, a boundary, we're gonna replace the word boundary today with agreements, okay? But to establish your agreements, first you need your standards, your standards, okay? So, and many of you ladies, you're walking around like chicken with your heads cut off and you all think, I know what I want, I know what I want, I know what I want. And I say this because so many of you go through my private coaching program and you go through this proprietary program I created and you know what you say every single time? Wow, why didn't someone teach me this in school? Why didn't my parents teach me this? I finally figured out what I want. By the way, if you need some help with that, schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's a link in the description below. Schedule that free call with me. I can help you establish that. And many of you, you all talk like you know what you want, but you didn't even know about this dating vow. Maybe you heard it in a previous video, but these dating vows, as an example, are agreements that you establish right from the get-go. You don't have to do this on a first date. You don't have to do this on a second date. But if this guy wants to have sex with you, you have every right to establish your standard. And let me add this to your standard. Wow, I'm riled up. <laughs> okay, I'm obviously riled up with this one. Knowing how many times a week you wanna spend with someone is an important standard to get clarity on. Because here's the bottom line. People that see each other every day of the week have a better chance of succeeding than someone that sees each other six times a week or five times a week or four times a week or three times a week or two times a week or one time a week or one time a month or once every six months. Do you see the more time you spend together, the greater chance you have of relationship success. So for those of you that are in long distance relationship where you spend all day incessantly texting each other and texting each other and texting each other, which is the weakest form of communication, by the way. It's the weakest form of communication. 80 to 90% of communication is not is, is nonverbal. It's the, it's the facial tones, it's the pheromones, it's the, it's the, um, the hand movements. So, so Leaf says rant time, thank you so much. Okay, so coming back to you, you folks that are doing some of these long distance relationships where you're not spending significant time together, you're mostly in cyber relationships and you're gonna have a much harder time to establish your boundaries. So, standards. What's okay and what's not okay for me? Use my dating vows as a template before you get involved with someone. And then when you get involved with someone, Read the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. This has all the agreements you need. Or not all, well, actually, let me, let me backtrack here. Read the other book by John Gottman, The Seven Principles for Making a Marriage Work. Now, I know some of you don't like the M word. Just take out the word marriage and replace it with serious, committed relationship. This gives you the blueprint. But Jonathan, you're making me read all these books. Oh my God, I had someone complain the other day. All you do is talk about books. Do you know books are knowledge? Do you know there's a reason why we spend so much money on libraries and bookstores because books are knowledge. Do you know in one year you can gain such a mass of information if you read one you know, chapter of a book every single day? That's it, one chapter a day. You could probably accomplish, look, the book, um, where's this book? By the way, one of my favorite books, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, 19 chapters. Do you know it takes only 16 minutes to read a chapter? 16 minutes a day, 19 chapters in 19 days. You could literally every month finish two books. 
But Jonathan, I'm too busy. I don't have time for that. I just want to magically hope that all of this stuff works out for me. Folks, many of you are delusional. That's not fair to say. You're in a fantasy land because you're not willing to put the work. You just expect that things are going to work out easily. Well, they don't. So learning these things are critically important for your relationship success. I want to recommend another book to you. This is the thinnest book on the planet, okay? It's called The Couple's Communication Guide to Love and Happiness. I want to read you some of these chapters because it relates to this dynamic of boundaries, expecting things to just work out, thinking there is no way out, communicating too much or not enough, making the relationship a target of collateral damage, wanting to be right. We talked about that. Making assumptions, always never why. Criticizing without giving positive reinforcement. Taking, so taking down or being passive aggressive. Check out this book. You guys all talk about communication and it is the most critical next to trust. Communication by far is the most critical component within a healthy, happy relationship. Most of you focus so much on how tall he is or what if he's, if he's balding or, you know, like, listen, character matters most. Kindness, generosity. We got to let go of our, our image of Brad Pitt or, or um, who's my favorite? <laughs> um, uh, well, Grace Kelly was pretty hot or, or, or um, uh, Jacqueline Smith, but none, or Cheryl, uh, or wait, uh, Linda Carter, okay? But I know you guys are hung up on Brad Pitt and Ryan Joss, Gosling and George Clooney, okay? But what matters most is not what they look like, what matters most on the inside, can you communicate in a way to be seen and heard and understood by this person? And more importantly, are you with someone that you don't have to establish boundaries, you establish agreements early on because you set the rules of engagement to forge a healthy, happy relationship moving forward? Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please hit, let me know. Please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. There's a link below to all the books I recommend. There's a link to uh, schedule a discovery call with me. I'd love to help you attract that amazing man in your life, God, universe, spirit. Ah, I'm in a healthy, happy relationship where we have great chemistry with one another and our communication is off the charts with one another and we can blend our lives together and we share the same values with one another. We build the deep roots of trust to sustain a healthy, happy relationship through our agreements that we make with one another. God, universe, spirit, I invite that in and I'm experiencing that in my life. Ah, that's my prayer for you all. Okay. Post a comment, I'd like to hear about it.